Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Living in the Red Dot. This is May from Singapore. Today's video is not going to be about perfumes. It's going to be about bags. Uh, it's going to be about one bag that I have restored and another uh, coach bag that I will be showing you how I restored and also sharing with you some experiences that I've had in um, buying this used uh, vintage bags from uh, resellers here in Singapore. So if this is something you're interested in, please stay tuned. Hi everyone. So the first thing I want to show you today is a bag that I've worked on um, last week. And it is a Toscano Italy bag circa 1987. It's basically a messenger document bag and it looks like this. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's beautiful. There. And it can it has a shoulder strap. So you can carry it via the top handle or this um, shoulder strap that you can attach. It's got a lock here and it's got a special turn lock. Um, it, it's got a back pocket right here as well. Open it through the bottom there. There's a back pocket. And you know, when you open it up, there's a pretty good amount of uh, space inside. So this bag, um, I got it because it looks very elegant and it also reminds me a lot of the Hermes Kelly bag. So if you're a bag enthusiast or purse enthusiast, you know how popular and expensive the Kelly bag is. Um, so uh, the Kelly bag was, has always, the style has always been a part of the Hermes collection. I believe it used to be called the Sac à de Poche. Um, so bag for documents or messenger bag um, is what it is until in 1977 it became really popular and renamed the Kelly bag because of the actress um, turned Princess of Monaco uh, Grace Kelly so this bag is very reminiscent of that um, so that was 1977 when the Kelly bag was uh, named the Kelly bag and this is 1987. This style is actually quite popular uh, back then and when I look at old bags um, around that circa 1970s early 1980s this style does come up often but I, I think this is the closest that I've seen to the Hermes Kelly bag. It even comes with the lock I guess. You use it um, as a document bag so if you got private important documents in there you can lock it up it's like a briefcase basically so that's one bag I've worked on and I actually got this bag two years ago but I never worked on it because it was in pretty good condition um, but what I found it needed was a good polishing so once I found a good cream polish I wanted to try it on and I think it worked out quite well right here see it's a bit shiny now before it was kind of dull black so I conditioned the leather first and everything before putting on the leather uh, polish um, this I never painted it's um, it's the leather that it came with I just basically conditioned it conditioned it really well now the brass hardware was quite tarnished so it's got kind of like black gray greenish like crap on it. So I used uh, Brasso Metal Polish. Unfortunately, when I did that, it also stripped off the gold-ish plating. Um, it should have been this color. Now this one I never polished because it was inside the bag and never got tarnished. But you see the difference in color? This is a bit more kind of white, gold, silverish color now. But nevertheless, it's, you know, nicer now. It's shinier. So that is one bag that I've worked on recently. And the next bag I wanted to show is the Coach Willis bag, which is right here. I have it in the color mahogany. It is beautiful. I love it. So this particular style, I believe, from my research, was released back in 1990. 
three. I could be wrong, um, but um, yeah, it was released in 1993, but this bag in itself is manufactured in 1996. So, the, and the style number is 9927 for this bag. It's quite a large bag. I think this is the largest out of all the coach bags that I have. Um, it's about 10 and a half inches um, and the width here. And then the height is about uh, 10 inches. And the strap is really long. It's really long on me. It's so long that I have to uh, punch extra holes on the side. I know, sacrilege, but I need to be able to wear it. So I punch some holes in it. Um, but measuring the straps from from the from the top um, lock here, trigger snap here to the to the other side of the trigger snap, it is about 50 inches in length. Um, I believe you can have the leather cut um, in a cobbler if you wish to do so, but for me, I just decided to punch some extra holes here. Um, what's special about this bag? Well, the size is great. The style is amazing. Um, you know, it's got this removable uh, trigger snap locks right here, like crab claws, top handle, and oh yeah, the back you have this extra uh, pocket here, so you can put maybe your phone or stick. Uh, I stick my bus card in there, and then inside there is another pocket here, and another zip up pocket there. And it's very roomy, very roomy. I have an umbrella, my wallet, um, an extra foldable grocery bag. So yeah, so overall, this the size of the bag really fits uh, my needs. Uh, much better than the station bag, which I've been wearing and using before I used the Willis, the station bag. Um, station bag is an older model before 1994 right here and it it has the same um, uh, style similar style as the Willis but it's much narrower um, it doesn't have the dowel this is the dowel the dowel is this part here now I love the dowels because I'm a sucker for it because it keeps the shape of the bag like the top doesn't kind of like buckle or get reshaped when you carry heavy heavy stuff like this this could get this could pull the leather up and have some warping whereas this one stays nice and smooth and elegant so that's the biggest difference with uh, the station bag um, also the back pocket is very handy this back pocket is hanging. Other than that, the inside is pretty much the same. Aside from the size, you've got the pockets, inside pockets right here. Actually, this one doesn't have a zip up pocket. So um, another way I can compare the Willis bag is with the Logan. The Logan actually came first before the Willis, before this one. The Logan was, I believe, released 1991. This bag is 1994. Um, so you've got the dowel, the turn lock, but this has more of a lady-like uh, shape to it. Um, but it's got the back pocket there, the front pocket, and uh, the zip up, um, zipper pocket inside. <clears throat> so this bag is quite spacious as well so if you don't like the boxy shape of this this is this is pretty pretty good it fits all my stuff as well so so yeah so that's um what i wanted to talk about with which regards to the willis now the third thing i wanted to mention is my experience in buying disused coach bags so far you know i've only had one bad experience and that was the most recent one now most of these bags i pay about uh less than a hundred dollars or less uh 
by less I mean like 25 to a hundred dollars um, and generally like you know you got two groups of people people who are aware of vintage collectors vintage coach collectors call themselves coaches am I a coachy <laughs> And then there's those ones who are basically just trying to get rid of old stuff in their wardrobe. Um, most of the time, those ones are not in very good condition. So I end up repainting the leather, which is fine. But the people are generally nice to talk to. They are very polite. You know, you deal with them and then they give you the bag and that's it. Um, then there's those ones who are aware of the, you know, demand that there's a certain demand for coach bags so they ask for a little bit more premium but then again their bags are also in better condition so let's say the station bag was quite pricey i think at a hundred like dollars um this one um but it was it's in very good condition i didn't have anything to do with it everything is original about it um and then you've got the willis bag which is very very popular this one is quite popular um, and it doesn't come around as often so this bag I actually paid a premium it was listed for $160 and I um, I asked if I could have it for $150 and, and she was okay with it so I bought it for $150 but again it was not in bad condition it was in pretty good condition I didn't have to paint anything um, except for maybe the, the sides were a little bit worn. I will show you in a video later how I restored this particular bag. Um, yeah, like the other bag, the backpack one that I worked on in another video, I think I got it for like $38. So very good deal. And the leather is all good. They're all excellent. Um, yeah, so I didn't really pay much except for the Willis, which is really popular. It actually has been re-released in 2012 for the 70th anniversary of the Coach brand. And then um, now you can actually like find it in the Legacy Collection, I believe. And the, you know, so there, it, it's newer, a bit sleeker, but it's still the Willis and it's quite expensive. I think it's about like 500 and up at the Coach store. Um, but now I'm going to talk about like a really bad experience that I've had. So basically I saw a posting here at Carousel for about, um, $50. Uh, and I looked at the bag and it was in pretty bad condition. Like it, you can tell it's been used quite a lot. It's got a lot of scuff marks. Um, but I think... It, it looked like from the pictures that the leather was still good. So I was I was okay. You know, I would ask if I could get it for $50. And I didn't even bid low for it. Um, uh, considering it was an older coach bag. I think it definitely before 1994, the model. I think it was a bucket style like bag. So the lady and I have agreed on the price and I was arranger for arranging already for a courier and then all of a sudden she said um, she couldn't sell it to me anymore. I'm like, why? And then she said, I learned something from you. I'm like, okay, like what did you learn from me? And she never said, but then she said that she would entertain a higher price if I would like to bid more so I said um, I think 50 is fair enough if not a little bit more than what I usually pay the last bag that I got in such a condition was about $38 and she said no I, I can't sell it for you for like $50 I said okay fine I walked away from it and then the next thing I know, she she changed the price of the bag from $50 to $400. So I think there's a lot of misconception there um, with people and about the price of a coach bag. So vintage coach bags do not cost a lot. Um, I think I pay a lot more here in Singapore because we basically, it's an island, you know, we don't have a lot of selection. Um, but you can find it at Etsy, eBay, as low as like 
twenty-five dollars, twenty dollars, um, and Goodwill Salvation Army. So you can get this bags much much cheaper price. Um, it doesn't matter, like you know, if they say vintage or whatever. They are old bags, and they don't hold a lot of value. The reason people like me collect them is basically because I like the style. I think it's good to recycle bags rather than throw them. Um, the bags are really, really sturdy. The leathers are in good condition. So it's not about, you know, it's not like an LV bag or an Hermes bag or a Chanel bag where somebody would pay like $400, $700 for it. I think that's just crazy to price it that way. I'm not saying there are people who won't pay, who will or won't pay that much. But I think for the most uh, part, like, you know, people are like just going to walk away from it and say, I'll just wait for another one who would post something at a reasonable price. So anyway, that is one of the bad experiences that I've had here um, in terms of um, buying a used vintage coach bag in Singapore. People think that because you know, I was eager to buy it. I was very respondent, which I'm generally quite polite and very respondent when I'm conversing with people about purchasing things um, online. She thought that I was somehow, she was pricing the bag way too low um, or that I am like somehow scamming her by, you know, trying to get a bag like at $50 when it really costs like you know the value is $400 so anyway that that's like that was a really really annoying experience and left a bad taste in my mouth so so that's it for that so for the next parts of this video I am gonna show and maybe talk through or just put captions on what I'm doing um, with regards to refurbishing this particular bag so uh, thank you very much for listening to my rant. So, you know, I'll just go straight to the refurbishing section. Thanks. Bye.